Australian and US government cybersecurity agencies are warning that common website and app vulnerabilities can lead to large scale data breaches. Emerging, emerging technologies are making it easy for hackers to access and tweak sensitive data due to a lack of security checks. Well, joining me live is Phil Goldie, Vice President and Managing Director of Okta, the world's leading identity company. Thank you so much, Phil, for joining us. Yes, this topic is not going anywhere, of course. What is the current cyber uh, threat landscape in Australia like at the moment? Yeah, thanks, Jenny. Uh, look, it's fair to say it's evolving and it's continuing to gather pace. It's something that's, that's pretty complex, certainly for, for boards and for companies uh, to deal with. I think if you think about why that is, you know, Australians are pretty attractive targets globally. You know, we're generally considered to be a prosperous nation, high net worth individuals, uh, companies doing well. So, um, you know, we are definitely seen as a, as a target globally. We're also a, a nation of people that are, you know, online more. Uh, at Okta, we've just done some research that shows that typically around the world, um, people have about 20 different identities on average across different sites and apps. And in Australia, that's a lot higher. So we're a very digital nation. Uh, so those two factors make us a really, a really um, appealing target globally. And then I think if you look at the rise in, in attacks that you know, Australian businesses are dealing with, it's growing continuously. About 12 months ago now, the Australian Cybersecurity Centre um, said that they'd had reported 76,000 different breaches and attacks uh, in the country. And that's just the ones that I think are known about and the ones that have been reported. Uh, so that's one about every seven minutes and that we expect I think over the last 12 months would have risen the game when the, when the numbers come out. So it's definitely a, a challenging area. And then, you know, the final aspect is, is just the sophistication. I mean, these organisations, these uh, global networks are, are very sophisticated. They run like biz, big businesses. You know, they have CEOs, CFOs, chief marketing officers in some instances. So they run like big organisations. Um, and the attacks are becoming more and more sophisticated as well. So attacks like phishing, which you know many organisations are focused on, are really, really challenging, becoming much more sophisticated. And then you get the virtuous loop where you know we see these big scale data breaches uh, here in Australia. The, the details that get stolen from those go on to fuel other sorts of attacks around the world. Um, so it's it's definitely a th you know a threat landscape that's evolving. It's becoming more complex, and mm. it's definitely a challenge for Australians. So I guess it's not really a matter of if, it's when, isn't it, in terms of being hacked. It is, yeah. I mean, the you know uh, the, the 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 industry would tell you that you're either an organisation that has been hacked or you just don't know it yet. And I think that's definitely true. We see that talking to a lot of customers. You know, there's a real heightened sense of focus now, which I think is good. That's definitely coming from the board level down. There's a lot of focus on this, um, and so um, yes, it's definitely a big threat. So, in terms of board levels, what responsibility do organisations have from a board level? Well, ultimately, I mean, the board is there to manage risk, and this is a definitely an emerging uh, area of high risk. And so, you know, the, the buck stops, I guess, with the board there. Um, you know, the, ultimately, it's the executives that have to deal with the day-to-day -day implementation of the right sort of technologies and policies and, and, uh, and other things. But uh, the accountability for the governance of that definitely sits at the board level. There's a lot of commentary on that. Um, there's a lot of expectation on the board. Um, you know, Darren Goldie has come out and been, you know, vocal on that, I think, quite rightly. But I think boards have made progress, you know, in the last couple of years. But ultimately, it's about manage, managing organisational risk, and that sits with the board, you know, fairly and squarely. And tell us about some of the technology. I know that um, Okta's solutions are based on Zero Trust, for example. Tell us about that. Yeah, so Zero Trust is essentially saying, you know, how do we move to a, an environment where we don't trust anything or anyone until we explicitly have to, and we can guarantee who they are, and we only trust them for the period of time that you need access to that sort of information. So many organisations are starting to move along that journey of Zero Trust now. It's a, it's a good example of a technology topic that's crossing over uh, into the board. It's becoming a board discussion. Um, and so many organisations are on that journey, which I think is a good thing. All right. And in terms of the, the gap with boards, like what kind of practical skills do, do people need to learn? Yeah, I think, I mean, if you look, first of all, at why we've got the skills gap that we have, I think a lot of boards have been constructed, you know, over the sort of history of corporate Australia from people that have spent long periods as CEO, they've spent time in, you know, in areas like finance and M&A and, and legal. And so those are the skills that are typically made up board composition. But now there's, you know, there are new um, areas that boards are dealing with. I mean, outside of technology, ESG is a good example of a very emergent area that boards are focused on. You know, cyber and technology is another one. And so, you know, I think the makeup of boards needs to be looked at. And, uh, you know, you ne we need to have a clear point of view in terms of what that, what that will look like going forward. Um, I think, you know, some practical things I think that boards should start to do uh, assessing skills. You know, a lot of boards go through assessments of the skills that make up the board. I think looking at that through the lens of cyber security and thinking about the next, you know, two to three to five years. Um, making sure you're looking at the right reporting and metrics at the board level that suggest that the organisation is as secure as it can be and it's making progress in that space. 
Um, you know, I sit on the board of CMRI, the Children's Medical Research Institute. We've done things like cyber simulations, which have been really useful, I think, in raising just the awareness of the gaps that we have uh, and helping to put, you know, really uh, practical steps in place. Um, and then maybe finally, the, you know, the establishment of a digital advisory or a, a cyber advisory committee reporting to the board. You know, can really allow broads to bring outside in experience, industry experience. And in our industry, there are plenty of people that really want to get involved and help uh, to boards across the country. So, um, yeah, lots of practical things I think boards are really starting to make progress on. Yeah.